get started. Um, for those of you guys on my team, uh, you know, I've, I've been pestering you all weekend. Thanks for letting me do that. Um, I think I uh, sent a couple of uh, emails. I know I did to the leaders out there, but um, you know what? I'm just, I cannot be more excited about the opportunity that we have. You know, I, I just think that the announcement that Barry Clarkson made on Friday, I think it brought a lot of people into the game, into the equity bonus game that maybe, you know, maybe truth be known, maybe maybe they wouldn't have been um, in, in, in the equity bonus game uh, had Barry not changed that. Um, also with the fact that, okay, so so the announcement, if, if, if you haven't learned, you really need to know this, that, okay, so instead of it being 15 unique riders to qualify regional manager starting March 1st, um, we're going to scale re to, to be a qualified regional manager. You have to have 10 uh, unique riders. So 10 qualified unique riders on a monthly basis and a minimum of 50,000 in issue paid production qualifies you regional manager. Now, first tier equity bonus is still the same. It's one regional manager. And so the cool thing is, is that at 550 writing agents, which is where I think, which is where I think Equus is going to be in the next 90 days, maybe 120 days. But I really do feel like Equus Financial is on a run rate right now to accomplish 550 riders pretty quick. I mean, we had 437 riders the week after the conference. Right now, we're averaging a little over 400 riding agents every week. And so just think about that, guys. The, to, to grow that next clip to 500, 550 riders, it's not too far away. And so Barry's announcement was that he is increasing the percentage payout for the equity bonus. And so for those of you guys that qualify for first tier equity bonus, that payout at 550 writing agents, that payout at 0.33% is gonna be $15,000 every 30 days. 15,000, now here's what I know. I know that $15,000 once a year can be life-changing, okay? If you had a job and you were making, your, like typical employee, you're, you're just making ends meet, you're probably creating a debt structure at your income level, right? And so you're, you, no matter where you're broke at, you just tend to be broke, whether you're broke at $30,000 a year, $150,000 a year, $250,000 a year, um, but just, just imagine this, every 12 months, your company gives you a $15,000 bonus. Like how would it make you feel to walk around for like, like two to three days with $15,000 in your pocket? I want you to think about that. What could you do with $15,000 a year? What could you do with that? Would you take a family trip? Would, would you try to make up for lost time and put it away, maybe put it uh, into a uh, retirement account, maybe call Pete Lee and go, hey, Pete, um, you know, help me set up a uh, retirement account, help, help me pick some stocks, you know, some things like that. I mean, what would you do with it? $15,000 a year would be life-changing. But here's, here's what I don't think people really grasp. How life-changing would it be if you positioned yourself where you got $15,000 every 30 days? Every 30 days, you get a check for $15,000. See, I'm not sure people really sit down and think about how life-changing it would be. So I, I, I'm not going to take up all the time tonight. But here's what I am going to tell you. I think it's worth you and I figuring out how to run. Because don't ever let anybody fool you into thinking that you can qualify a regional man. I don't care if it's five re I don't care if it's five unique writers. Don't ever let anybody think that you're ever going to attract somebody logically. You're not. How you go regional manager, whether it's 10 writing agents or 15 writing agents or 50 writing agents, if that's what regional manager was, to qualify a regional manager, 
you've got to set yourself on fire. You've got to be, you've got to lock in and you've got to think $15,000. And when I add my regional, uh, uh, regional manager bonus to that, uh, let's just say the average regional manager bonus is $1,700 a month. That's, that's like, that's, that's almost like $18,000, you know, not, not 18, it's almost $17,000. That's like over $16,000 every 30 days in a bonus check. Man, what could I do with that? Could I help my parents out with that? Could I take, could I take my parents to New York City for a weekend? Could I, could I go, could I go to New York City at Christmas time and see the decorations? Can I go see the Rockettes? Can I go see a play? Can I, can, can I, can I go to the Caribbean? Can I go take a cruise? What can I start doing? So, so setting yourself on fire, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight. And, and, but I'm excited about Carrie because Carrie has developed a skill level that I just think is, I think it's phenomenal. Ollie Collins has this skill level. Mike Hall has this skill level. In other words, other people have this skill level. But what we're going to get good at is we're going to get good at growing in any avenue that offers us growth. We're going to get good at it. And if it's zip recruiter, like what Carrie's getting ready to teach, whether it's, it's um, you know, no matter what it is, there are right people everywhere. And so we don't discount, we don't, we don't think one way is better than another. It all works. And so, Carrie Wysong, you uh, thanks so much for joining us and um, and talking about, I mean, your you know, your results, I'll I'll let you talk about your own results, but you you self-admittedly uh, told me that you were horrible at, at coal market recruiting at one point in time but there's some changes that you made to your cold market recruiting system that has made all the difference in the world. I think that e even if Barry hadn't changed regional manager, I think you're very close to qualifying regional manager. Um, and so you're, you're definitely going to be one of those that, that now with the new qualifications, you're going to go way over qualified. Um, and you've got an awesome team. I've met so many people on your team. Your team's incredible. Um, and they're certainly fortunate and very blessed to have a leader like you. So can you just take some time tonight and walk us through just the, just the kind of a, a, a simple thought process of somebody sitting out there and they're going, you know what, I've already talked to all my friends and family. Like I've already talked to my friends and family like eight different times. Like my friends and family don't want to hear from me anymore, right? So how can I grow and how can I go get my 10 writing agents in the next 90 days? Can I do it through ZipRecruiter? And so if somebody asked you that, Carrie, how would you answer them and what would you teach them how to do? All right. Thank you for that. And John, thank you for um, both of these calls that you've done tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, John and I really have a a pretty similar vision on the fact that there's multiple different multiple ways that we can help people multiple ways we can help uh, our clients with the leads multiple ways we can help somebody uh, trying to achieve our regional manager status I have whatever my skill set is John has his I will tell you this I remember very early on when I was deciding to recruit I remember asking Bill Martin <clears throat> Do people even apply to these jobs? Like I was, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> if I put an ad out there, like really people are going to like actually like hit reply. And, and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had, I, I just, for some reason, I thought I was just the only wacky one. But um, what I have found since then, which has been a very long time, maybe 18 months now I've been doing this um, there. I feel like it's everyone is looking for something honestly i mean the I, I interview so much to the point where i i can recruit you know 15 20 30 people a week and it's all walks of life it's people with high paying jobs it's people who are already uh, self-employed but you know all those things crash down and so um going in the cold market for me really to, uh, levels the playing field 
so that you're not limited on your person. You know, maybe you're shyer. That's what I would consider myself more on the shy side. And it's a challenge for me. I've been watching John for so long and how he, how he does this deal and he gets people on board with just talking to him. And um, I will, I'm, I'm hoping to continue to learn, but what about the rest of you that are like me and you're thinking, you know, either it seems daunting or scary, or I've already tapped that thing out. You can have all kinds of ads anywhere. Zip is just happens to be the one that's working best for, for me right now. And you're able to access more people where they're just looking for a shot. And so aren't we just looking to, I mean, Actually, it's the, the thing I enjoy the most. I came home just now from running appointments today. I do love helping those families. But when I can talk to somebody and I can visualize the differences it's going to make in their life, even on a part-time level, it's incredibly rewarding. And then to be able to help, you know, plug them into the system, show them that the system works. And, um, you know, and I did not start off with success at this. It was um, all kinds of structured interviews that nobody, I had people hanging up on me in the middle of interviews. I mean, I've gone through the whole ringer, the whole gamut to the point where, um, you know, I guess my style is, is I am a laser focused. It's just my personality style. What, whatever that thing is that I want, nothing is going to stop me. If, if, if it means I had a, um, a month of barely anything came in the bank, I don't care. I'm getting RM. I'm getting RM. What do I have to do to put them in the funnel? Funnel, funnel, funnel. This is drying up over here. Okay, I'm going to go this way. So I have forced myself to master zip to the point where now I'm very, very comfortable and I'm, I'm really excited to share with other people some of the uh, failures I had with it so I can save you some time and some of the tricks that have helped me um, get, you know, I think I have five, un five new writers this month. That's pretty good. Just all cold market. That's not That's awesome. Sister. So just, just working on that right now. So John, what, what else would you think would be a value that I could, um, touch on here just on the cold market side zip besides just kind of where I came from and where I'm going? Well, let's, let's, let's talk about this. How, how does somebody engage in zip? If somebody's sitting out there, they've never engaged in zip recruiter, um, how would they go about it? I mean, you have a national account. We have a national account. I reach them. Ollie Collins might call me. So many of us have national accounts. Like if you're just a, a regular agent out there, you're just getting started and you think like, wow, so I don't have to depend on my friends and family to grow my business with. Um, how would you recommend them getting started with ZipRecruiter? Yeah. And then if I could just back up, when John and I are saying zip recruiter, we're not like uh, doing an advertisement for them. We're just saying, I mean, you could go on Craigslist. I actually have a printout of all kinds of different free sites. It just happens to be zip is what's getting me the most traction. And if you do, you know, for me, I just had a four five, six hundred dollar account and I would recruit almost nobody <laughs> for several months. But for you guys, you have the benefit of potentially having an upline where let's say they have 50 ads in there and maybe they could break that up for you where you're not. Uh, so zip actually requires you have a minimum of, of 10 ads. And I think the lowest account they have is like $250 per month or something. Not everybody wants to do that. And so <clears throat> what I've offered with my team and is, um, you know, I'll, I'll give for those people that are, you know, doing a few things that are important to show that you are leadership quality. Um, I allow them to have for a much smaller cost, something where they have one, just one job ad. Let's start somewhere. Let's give them one job ad. Um, maybe eventually move up to three, five, 10. I've got Brandon Clark. He's got this whole thing mastered. He's up at 15, but we started each one of these people off. Um, I mean, I found most of, you know, Brandon Clark's name. I mean, he was just, he answered a zip recruiter <laughs> ad and i uh, it clicked it, the, it was either the right timing or the right match or something. And uh, we took him all the way through to the point where now, you know, he's a successful uh, sale uh, field underwriter. And now he's also quite successful out there with his own zip recruiter account. So it's, you know, reach out to your upline or your uplines upline and see if, um, well, I will say another thing, John, I don't know if you want me to say this out loud, but the people that are showing the, 
the initiative that I'm looking for and just some of the things that tell me that they are taking this very seriously, I will, I'll throw them a bone and say, hey, I've got, um, I called Cindy tonight. Cindy, you want my seven o'clock interviews? I mean, I can have in one day 30 interviews in a day. So what's it to me to just let them have one of my hours that might have six interviews per hour. Maybe they get one new recruit by the end of a month. I throw them something every once in a while. Um, now all of a sudden they might have, for all we know, a, a, they could be sales manager because they recruited enough people. Maybe they're licensed, maybe they're not. Um, anything we can do, especially now that this went from 15 down to 10, John, I'm, I'm actually less interested in the regional manager being uh, 10 instead of 15 and much more interested in how quickly I can get somebody below me to get to that yeah. 10. Sales manager, yeah. manager will see a regional manager. I mean, it's all reachable and attainable. And to me, if we can learn some of the tricks that John, how you, how you do, and we kind of back and forth here, and I can share what, you know, some of the failures and successes to help people, uh, you know, master the cold market side. It's not that hard. It's just a matter of being real. I mean, look at how John's sitting. He's just sitting, being real. Look, I'm pretty casual. I'm leaning back in my chair. That's how I talk. Hey, how you doing? You know, just have a real conversation. People appreciate it. Give them the real deal. And, um, and at the same time, when you're talking to them, um, you know, have a standard. People love it. People feel like they're kind of tucked in in their bed all nice and tight because, oh, we've got to do this. This is your expectation. This is where I have to go. That's the, like John said, get that course done two to three days. Do not let it take you 10 days. People love that. All of a sudden you say, okay, while we're talking, log in. I just sent you an invitation to Equus. They don't know what ICA means. And then uh, invitation, I want to make sure you get that discount code. Everything's about them, right, John? Everything is about how we can service them. And uh, get them to sign the IC right where you're talking to them. And next thing you know, you can start mastering that. Okay, so let's, we're, we're, we're going to back up. And, and I got the perfect text. And I actually got it from Jimmy Power. Okay, now, now you and I, Karen, you're going to laugh at this. Okay. You're going to laugh because... Jimmy's text is very real. It's very transparent. But most people that engage in cold market recruiting, they feel exactly like Jimmy does, which is exactly how you used to feel. So here's the text. Evidently, I suck at it. <laughs> what is, and here's, here's the question. And, 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 and here's the thing, Carrie. I want you to run with this, and I don't want you to hold back. Okay. Because Jimmy's somebody that's been in this business for a long time. He knows the deal. This, this is a leadership that we don't have new people on this thing. This is a leadership. So I want you to be, I want you to talk to Jimmy on what you did to change it. I want you to tell Jimmy how many ads you're running. What kind of ads are you running? How are you interviewing? What are you saying on your interviews? So let's start going through some of that. What did you do when you sucked at it? versus what you do now? When I sucked at it, I, I went and I Googled, what are great interview questions? And I analyzed that and I, I was looking at my iPhone and I had my 10 questions and I sounded like a robot. And nobody wants to deal with that, that's not real. I had 10 ads and I would sometimes get people on them, not very often, I didn't, I didn't learn how to utilize the zip system very well. It is, uh, it's not something that you just kind of turn it on and then wait for it to work. There is a, there's some management that you need to do with it every day. But on, on that interview, as soon as I switch from, okay, this is, I'm feeling uncomfortable and awkward talking to you, dude, on the phone, and you're feeling uncomfortable talking to me, I decide just, I'm just winging this sucker. Hey, how you doing? That's how I talk to my friends. Just okay, like so, okay, so hang on, okay? You only had 10 ads. Okay, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all, for some of y'all people out there, you, if you, if you want to make Zip Recruiter work, the most painful thing is sticking your toe in the water. Carrie, you went from 10 ads to 50 ads. Now, that was, a bigger, yeah. that was a bigger money investment. But right now, you're running 50 ads, Okay. And so there's some people out there that aren't financially able to do that, but there's some people out there that are sticking their big toe into the, into the cold market recruiting pool and they're, they, they're not jumping in and they're wondering why they suck at it. So number one, you had 10 ads, you had interview questions, which tells me you had no posture. 
No. You had no posture at all. You had no, none of this like, give me one reason not to work with you and see how fast I hang up this phone. <laughs> you, you were trying to sell them. You yeah. were trying to interview them. That, that absolutely, if you ever do get a right person on the line, that repels the right person. Okay, I, I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh, yeah. And let me go through the 10, 20, 50. So 10, um, I, I felt like I was starting to get good at um, running zip, just getting familiar with it. And I, I decided to go to 20 just to amp it up. I was right, whatever. So I decided to go to 20. I don't know, John, if it's maybe it's 25, but 20. The only reason why I'm at 50 is at the time I had about five people who said they wanted to share the zip account with me. That's the only reason why I jumped all the way into that. And what that turned out for me is people bail, and now I'm left with my 50 slots. <laughs> so um, I think everyone on here, I think uh, dip your toe in the water by you know jumping on your uplines for a minute, then finally getting your 10. I do think 20 is a great number. What is, I don't know if it's 20 or 25, zip kind of jumps up a little bit, but um, I think that's a great one to have. Um, but if I could get back into the interview, because uh, I mean, there was just very, um, specific times in my interviewing where I recognized I had to grow. So one was, again, I got rid of my little script and um, I wasn't going to give somebody 45 minutes of my time. Remember everyone, when you make a sale, you're going to make $500 in, in, that, in that hour, right? So we are $500 an hour people. And so all of a sudden I decided I'm going to truncate whatever I'm saying and, you know, in the I'm way different right now, but I, I reached the point where I thought I would Smile when I answer. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. Tell yourself to smile before you pick up the phone. It is the weirdest thing, but I would say my, my um, um, ICA signing went up maybe 40%. <laughs> I don't, maybe it's just Carrie and I have a robotic voice or whatever, but smile before. Hey, how you doing? You're happy, you're happy to talk to them. They're caught off guard even. What are you up to today? Isn't that what you say to your friend? Oh, I, out there in Phoenix, it's kind of hot out there. Just be chill. And, and then all of a sudden, well, how are you doing? When you get that, you're like, we are on to something here. This is actually like a person. I actually want to have a conversation with you. So it's just a conversation. Just like when you go in the house on an appointment, you're going to sit at the table. The more you're just like, hey, you know, just chill. I mean, I even like my shoulders are slumped. I just am very just chill. Um, and so... Let's see. So we get with the greeting. That's awesome. You get them talking about themselves and honest to, to God right now. I am trying to find how I have about six. I, I rotate between six and 10 people per hour. And I know most of those people are not worth my, my time at all. So I'm looking for how can I hang up on this person? And you guys do not even want to know how good I am at it from, oops, I think I have the wrong number because I didn't like how they were chewing on the potato chips. Or you can hear them on the speaker, car speaker, and the, hey, how are you? No, no, this is an interview for a serious career. And I've gotten to the point where, and, and you know what? If they really want it, they'll call me back and, you know, maybe we'll set this up. Oh, you like that? I like it. I like <laughs> um, it. Yeah, so the, the closer I came to having, um, I mean, I've wasted my time, John. I have wasted my, I've, I've wasted so much time on the phone with somebody who they never end up getting licensed. Um, so I say you, you start off real friendly, get them to talk, figure out if they're in between jobs or if they're looking for a side, side hustle. They usually get a little giggle out of it. Keep it where we got a little giggle going on just so they, they, they kind of are starting to like you. Get a feel and then if they tell me, you know, if you can tell they need a paycheck next Friday job, I actually have become their friend. You know what? Um, commission only is really difficult. I would suggest you keep looking for a job. I'm happy to help you get, you know, uh, send you a discount code so you can get the course done. But I, I or, you know, save my number. I try and cut bait. Um, but if somebody's really interested, I do. I mean, this is really, truly not for somebody who is unemployed and, and broke. So okay, I, I hey, like that. So let, let me ask you this um, real quick. I got a couple questions from Ollie, but one, one last question from Jimmy. Um, are your ads targeting uh, sales? Are you interviewing for sales or some type of uh, agency builder or both? Or what, what, what are your ads? What, what type of ads are you running? 
Love that question. Oh, boy, have I tested. I used to be an English professor, you guys. So I, the amount of time I have spent rotating out my ads and changing up. Uh, whether it's full-time, part-time, am I trying to get final expense, mortgage protection, is it, when I switch from trying to find, sorry, John, but when I switch from trying to find uh, the next regional manager, and I went to Robert Baljack and I are buddies, and he always calls me part-time queen. Soon as I switch, that my ad reads for someone looking for the side hustle, little 500 bucks on the side, explosion explosion look. go look at your ad go see who you're trying to appeal to and within and then what i end up finding is the people that apply a lot i mean it's a really high percentage where they're that professional person we're looking for and they're in that job that either they're miserable and everything john just got through saying they're either just, they don't have any time with their family they still work all these side jobs or whatever that but they can actually if you design your ad enough where they can visualize a night or a weekend, they can pop in a $500 sale here and there. Next thing you know, they can pay for their broken air conditioner at the end of the month. And they, you know, where else can you do something on the side like that? Let, let them come up with in their imagination how this could maybe turn into the other thing. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a scary move to switch all my ads over to from, you know, full time. Do you want to have a team or what? I don't even remember what I wrote anymore to the part time. But it was everybody, everybody, everybody was applying for it. Okay. So a couple of rapid fire questions here. Um, what type of filters or do you even have any filters in place from the people answering the ad to getting on your schedule? Uh, just with zip, they do have deal breakers. So the felony question, do you have reliable transportation? Go ahead and put in there a U.S. resident or citizen. They still get on your calendar, guys. Good luck. But those, those three, um, I have heard people who say they put some real strict ones in there. I don't know. I, I would rather throw a huge net out. I would say I am like a, an exception to a typical, and I'm glad that I've kind of found my way through. So I think there are people out there where they might fall through some cracks if you put your parameters too too tight. So that's yeah. really the three I have on there. So you don't have like any 30 minute videos or anything like that? Okay, so I have, I've gone, okay, good questions. This is pretty good. Um, so uh, I have put videos in. Okay, I actually put links into my couple favorite videos that are just, just a hyperlink. They can click it to watch Barry Clarkson and what is mortgage protection or something like that. But as far as like watch this 10 minute, 20, 30 minute, nobody's going to do it. I'm telling you right now, I even have a, um, I have a little video of, um, you, I don't like to hear my voice or see my face, so don't, this is okay put my this video of me just like hi i'm carrie um just wanted you know thank you for looking to apply it you know here at equus just something so they put a face to the words on the screen i got almost nobody <laughs> after that so i don't know this mug here but i say no less is more they're applying to your job on their smartphone they're not going to take the time to do all that they've got too many choices they have too many choices between Equus, between all the other mortgage protection companies, before between us and all the other insurance companies, and then all the other side sales companies. Okay, are you how how are you scheduling interviews? Do you use Calendly? Do you use any type of a thing like that? So when my my budget was extremely tight, free always sounded good. You can book dot me is free. So I went free. I recently upgraded, not recently, but at some point I upgraded, I think, to have two calendars or something. But um, I, I only know how to use youcanbook.me. It's served me very well. Youcanbook.me. Okay. Um, do you rate your candidates on Zip? No. Okay. Um, Let me I, I did do that, and it just ended up being too much of a time waster for me. Okay. But if you had somebody that do, would do that, that, that's a good thing, right? Um, I know that, um, like when you close your ad on zip and then it'll pop up oh, here, here's some candidates, rate them. I know that you will definitely get better people applying to your jobs. If you do it, I just literally don't have time to do it. Or okay. I now here, here's a time question because I, I don't, I don't know if people are, uh, understand this, but, um, like you talked to Brad at length today on 
like refreshing your ads, uh, knowing what ads were producing, what ads were dead, like what, how are you doing that on a daily basis and what do you recommend people do on that? Okay, most people are applying for jobs on Mondays and Tuesdays. You guys need to remember that, okay? So on Mondays or Tuesdays, and so by Friday night, I will make sure I have uh, enough of my good ads going. How do I know they're good? Because I see somebody's applying within um, eight hours, certainly 24 hours, I should have a few people have clicked to apply. If that sucker is dead, I'm moving it. Get rid of that city and put in a different one. Why would you maybe not have somebody apply and you put it Atlanta, Georgia, and you're thinking, my gosh, the population, sometimes the population is too huge. Population's around, you know, 125 and 225 is kind of a good population. Oh, shoot, I forgot your question. I got on my own little um, side, you know, tangent there. Well, uh, no, no, it was, that, that was good, but... Um, we talked about how how much you were refreshing your ads, oh. okay, that because that that's something you got to do. If you're not going in there and if you're not seeing the results of your ads and all that, so if Jimmy Pyron is if if he's got an ad that's not getting any hits, I mean, what how what what does he need to be doing on a daily basis? Yeah, so every single day, um, and I have tried to delegate this off, and I it's almost like to me my zip account is almost like leads where you're afraid to have somebody dial them. You might have it screw up. So I actually go through and I, I monitor um, the activity, how many people have um, viewed it and how many applied. You should have like 25% have now applied. Um, you want to rotate your areas. People do recognize your exact ad. So let's say, we'll just, we'll just pick on Atlanta right now. So let's say you just keep hitting Atlanta and your ad is sitting there for a month. Whether it has moved to page four of all the other ads in Atlanta or not, the people looking for jobs, they're, you know, like if you, you hang up a picture in a, in, in a room, at a certain point, you don't even see that picture anymore because it's just always sitting there. So you need to kind of, you need to be rotating maybe every month or something so that you are in completely, you know, so let's say you're tackling California. California hasn't seen your ad for maybe three weeks. And then if I wake up the next morning and some ad that I put in there is getting no traction, I'm deleting it as quickly as possible because I paid for that spot and I can put something else right in replace of it and keep it, keep it so I get the people keep, you know, getting into my calendar. Okay. Um, so Mike Hall asked a question that I think is very similar to maybe a question that Kevin Hopkins has out there, which is, Okay, so what, once the interview's done, um, what's your follow-up system? Like, are, how often are you touching them? So okay. let me ask that first, then I'm going to ask more of the getting started question. But once you interview them, what's your process? I know today you said that you actually stay on the phone and ICA them, which yeah. you call an invite. I'm going to send you an invitation. Yeah, you know, very you important to say that. Okay, and... Um, so you stay on the call and you, you send them their invite, which is their independent agent co contractor agreement. And, uh, but what's your touches after that? Okay, that's also really an, an important step. Uh, there's just so many thoughts that are running through my mind here. Um, by the way, you might get somebody who's not going to sign and it's okay. You know, you'll, you'll know when it happens, move on. Um, one other thing on that, some people, I think it's number four, John, where they get stuck on what's this chargeback business. Um, if you get somebody who is challenging that, by the way, and you just say, you know, you have a contract with each insurance carrier and it's, you know, we'll get to that when you get there, but you can put, you know, as earned, you put as earned instead of uh, advanced. There's always a way to word this differently. They always settle once you do that. Okay. Then what are the touches? So now, um, I tell on my interview, after they've heard pretty clearly what, how, how they can win here, I say my only expectation is good communication. You know, we're going to invite you to, you know, the Equus is going to invite you to a training here and a training there and convention this or whatever. But between you and me, you come to that 100% line, I'm going to meet you right there. And how do I know you're even there unless you're communicating with me? So I say communication. So by the way, so when we hang up here, can you please send me a text as soon as we hang up? This is my direct number. Put me in your contacts. And I just want to make sure you, back to them, I want to make sure you got that discount code. 
for that for that course okay all right and then i'm also going to send you a welcome email so i do have in my marketing platform at equus i developed about maybe 12 10 or 12 just things that i thought were helpful for a new agent that they'll get every four days and i say um second thing i expect is um just hit reply i want to make sure my email back to them i want to make sure you always get communication from me and it doesn't go into your spam folder so um and then let's say they didn't sign the ica then within 24 hours i'm sending them a text because guess what sometimes i do type the email address wrong believe it or not um, sometimes it goes in the spam folder even if you tell them it might go in the spam folder they forget because they just heard so many things they don't even know what they just heard so now they forgot that so I send a text and I have it kind of pre populated hit copy and paste and send the next day hey I was great talking with you yesterday just wanted to make sure you did find that email invitation um, from Equus um, and see if you have any questions and if they don't answer you peace peace out peace out have a great Happy day I'm, I'm constantly, uh, especially now that I'm recruiting quite a bit, I'm constantly trying to find a way to weed somebody out because I have found all those people that were dead weight, that weight gets heavier and heavier later on. So the quicker you find that they're not following, you know, what you're saying is the system here, um, you know, just cut bait. Okay. Um, so we're right up on the, the time frame tonight. Um, I have gotten a couple of requests. Uh, I'm not sure if you're willing to uh, email just maybe just a copy of an ad that you use just so people can see, um, you know, whatever. But um, if you want to, you can send that to me. The, the thing that I do want to end up with tonight is, um, and Carrie, I'll, I'll, I'll let you throw, throw your thoughts on this as well. You know, oh, and by the way, um, Luke, Luke asked a question, um, how soon can you get started? I think Luke just got his license. And uh, you can start, I mean, as soon as possible. Um, I mean, the biggest thing is, is our goal is every single brand new pe person in our organization, our goal is twofold. We wanna help you qualify at night, which means you're getting paid. You're writing business and you're getting paid and you're getting deposits. That's, that's a cool thing. Number two, we want to help you qualify sales manager. So here's the thing. Some of you guys on the call tonight, you haven't talked to your war market. And I highly recommend that if you want to go regional manager and you want to position yourself for that equity bonus, I, I'm just going to tell you, there's only one way I've ever seen to grow. Don't ever let anybody logically tell you like, okay, you go and you do an interview and you hire this person and then, and then you hire that person and then the, don't ever let anybody logically draw it out because if you're going to grow, it's not going to be logical. If you're going to grow, it's going to be because of one thing, and that's because you want to worse than anything else in life. You want to grow. You want to be regional manager, and you want to, you want to get that equity bonus. And it's what you want to bigger than anything that you want in life. Like you, you can't even think about anything else. That's what your burning desire is. That's what your singleness of purpose. And that was my point in sending the email over the weekend to my leaders is because I'm just telling you, if, if you've lost that, if you're kind of 211 or 210 or 209, and you, 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 you know what it's like to be 212, but you're not at 212 right now, guys, I'm just telling you, right now is the time. To, it's go time. It's go time. Every single one of us in our local area, we've got one shot to build the final ex Equus final expense. A lot of us in our areas, we've still got a lot of room to go build Equus mortgage protection. But right now, every single one of us have the opportunity to go out in our local zip codes and get 10 to 15 agents writing business on a monthly basis. So can you qualify a regional manager? The answer to that is not only yes, but you can qualify regional manager, Brandon Clark, in your local area. You don't have to go, you don't have to go hire it out all over the United States. You can have it in your local area. That's a big deal because it's a lot easier to grow a local base shop than it is to try to grow all over the United States. It's very difficult to get people started at distance. John, so can I ask something real quick? 
Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, what'd you say? I said, yeah, if you want to, go ahead. Just three seconds. The, ad, the thing about my ad, um, so I just noticed somebody said they found my ad on Zip. It will ruin things for me and you if, if everyone has the same one because then all of a sudden it's the same ad and nobody's hitting it. So if you do find it, go ahead and use it a little bit, but right. um, do, do it somehow do it differently or else everyone, you know, everybody applying is going to feel like they see the same darn ad everywhere and they're going to move on. So sorry. Sure. With your thing. And hey, one of the other things that you said today, Carrie, that I thought was really neat is you, you, you're not using Equus. Oh, not, my logo? Yeah. Uh, there's just Equus logo. So it, on the left of your, your ad, it'll say, I don't know, I think it's called logo. Uh, switch it out. Put, I just did some kind of cheap little thing. I mean, I don't even care how you do it, but you want some way so that somebody's going to click you want to entice and intrigue. So if they see maybe sales representative or sales rep, and then maybe it says Equus, but it looks different, or maybe you have your, your agency name in there, somebody might click it a little bit more than if they see 12 of them in a row. I mean, it's just 12 in a row now. So I would definitely suggest um, changing that out. Kevin Hopkins, if you will, if you will text me, I, I do want to get your question answered, but I, I think you're asking what does your, I think Kevin's asking like what does your conversation on the interview, what does it entail, and um, so, I mean, do you want to take a stab at that? I mean, I, I, I'll just tell you, I, I, I talk about results. Here's what I know, I, I just, and I say this all the time, and, and I just really do believe it to the core of my being. But don't nobody care about what I do. Don't nobody care about Equus. Don't nobody care about Mutual of Omaha. And you can get good at logically explaining all that crap that you want to. But here's what people want to know. They want to know what's in it for them. How do they make money? And so get good at talking to people about their results. Carrie? <laughs> Well, um, I think actually what I say in my interview is um, a little bit more long-winded than when we're trying to wrap this up, but just a, a good opening, a good closing, and in the middle, I actually base it mostly on what they have said back to me. So I, I mean, I, I'll give it a, maybe an example. I have found Brandon Clark has even repeated this to me. They do want to hear about your success. They, they do want to know, you know, and so maybe if you don't have too much success yet but you want to start growing a team right now use the success of your upline and your team and what makes that different um do not oversell equus do not they will it will put the interview e in a power position you want them always in a position of trying to sell themselves to you um sometimes they get long-winded or whatever but you know five pretty much what hey, well did you watch the video i sent you you know, I, I refer back to the videos, what questions you have about what mortgage protection is, or did you watch, you see who Barry Clarkson is? Okay, awesome. Well, we have a system and um, yep. And yeah, I guess in a nutshell, I'll say, um, you know, you're looking for full-time or part-time. Um, you know, we typically make about $500 per sale. An appointment should last you about a hundred, uh, an hour. It's getting late for me too. Um, an appointment should last you about an hour. Um, insurance companies um, they can pay you typically between one and three days and uh, you know I'll kind of say something real about that like you know listen you could literally have your refrigerator break on Monday you can decide I guess I'm working five appointments today and tomorrow so I have money in the bank on Friday I say little things where you can help them picture what it is so you know what does that sound like to you put it back to them you seeing yourself starting as full-time part-time what part about that appeals to you and um, I was telling John earlier today, my favorite close on them is after you're done with, you know, the opening, get them talking, they're worth your time, move on to a few, a little bit of the meat and potatoes. I don't get into Transamerica and AIG, I don't talk about any of that. Um, and then I'm getting ready to do the close. You know what, I think this might be a nice fit for us. I, um, I'd like to send you an invitation. I already told you a little bit how I do that. Um, and so could you log in right now, can check your email, so they do that. Now we're sort of done with that and I'll I'll just say well listen um, 
So this last, this close has worked really well for me because it's similar to when you are in a house for sale and you want to say the objections before the client can say the objections. So this person's going, ah, this lady, she has no idea. I just got done with five interviews. I got five more tonight. I'm just shopping between commissions and I got this and that. And, but go ahead you give me a good run. I'm going to call, I'll call them right out. Hey, listen, I actually downplay it. Commission only positions are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. You can get a job every five minutes all day long. What is it about what we talked about today and Equus in the videos that stands out to you, makes you think that Equus is a great choice for you? Let, and then all of a sudden, you almost took away any power that they just had. And that has made such a huge difference. And if they give me anything I don't like, well, you know, um, well, I'm going to talk t with my wife about it. We make... We make decisions together, <laughs> uh, you know, and I'll say, if anything where you can tell they're just trying to play that little deal, I remove it immediately. You know what? I have really enjoyed our first interview. We are winners here, win early. We're looking, we're exploding in your area. I'm looking for somebody to just jump right in here because we can't even work with you until you have a license anyway. Um, so if you need time to think about that, why don't we just, you know, keep my number and you get back with me and I try and cut bait right there. That person never turns into the one you want. Hey, Carrie, um, I'm going to regret if we don't cover this tonight. And I know we're kind of going a little bit bonus time here. But um, once you do, because you have developed a track record via ZipRecruiter where you are interviewing people. So you got people answering your ads. You're interviewing people. You're getting them through the process. I know one of the things that I loved about what you did today was you kept talking about getting through the licensing process in three to five days, three to five days, three to five days. Um, and, um, but once you get somebody through that process, what does getting an agent started look like in the Wysong team? I mean, are you doing ride-alongs? Are you doing, I mean, how did you get an agent started? Ooh, well, that's a part I am trying to tighten up a little bit, but, um, no, I do not. Um, Bill has told me since the very beginning, if somebody's going to, you know, need, by the way, I think when somebody um, rides along with me, I, I handicap them. John, I don't know your experience with it, but somehow all of a sudden one ride along needs to be five, which needs to be 10, now it's 20. They never, I, agree. I don't know what that is. So I actually prefer they don't ride along with me. I am not the magic, um, but yeah, so I, I just, tr truthfully, I, I tell them to get on the 11-11, Monday 11, Friday 11, uh, the Wednesday, Friday listening, to to build doing that i do send my own little like structured every four day um training emails which basically are just videos of bill i mean it's still going back to them and then um it's just every time i'm talking to them i'm telling them what the next two things are to do and then when i want them to get back with me on that and that's another way of weeding them out okay and then um getting them in the field um for me julie dunsmore on my team she says that you know she says it best i'd be just I called her one morning and I just said, you know, what are you doing? And she said, I'm making pancakes. I said, well, you know, I want you to put that down. I want you to pull up that pile of uh, leads that you just printed. I want you to dial right now for the next 30 minutes. Tell me how many you get. Jump in the water with two feet. I couldn't, I don't, I'll go nose to nose with anybody on anxiety. Uh, you know, what the whole bit you're, I just th tell people to just throw themselves in, quit overthinking. Don't be um, studying owner, man, you know, the underwriting guides. Um, not a whole lot, John. I'm, I am trying to work on that, but I tell them that I, you know, I, I'm going to give them a couple things to do. Do not think too far ahead. I'm going to be the visionary for them for until they're through training. I want them to only focus on the nose on their face. Do this and this and this. And then when they come back to it, was that hard? No, it's easy. Everything will be simple, simple, simple always. I will always tell you the next two, three things to do. And that seems to have helped a lot too. Otherwise, this whole thing becomes overwhelming. It okay. feels so, it's everything. It, and the bottom line is, is that it's hard. It's hard to get the wrong people to do the right things. Mm. Okay. It's hard. And, and when, when you're, when you're hiring in onesies and twosies, when all you're doing is, is you're getting one guy in and one guy in and one guy in and one guy in and one guy is able to, to get your whole attention, you're screwed. It ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. 
And so what I'm trying to get people to understand, Carrie, and I'm, I'm going to wrap with this. What I'm trying to get people to understand is, is that I think right now with Equus Financial, with Barry's announcements, I think it's high time that we, that we allow ourselves for just a, a period of, t of our lives, just a season of our lives, to be good at both. Be good at sales. Go write your seven to ten applications a week or your five applications a week. Go write them. Go write them. But also be good at building. Be good at checking interest. And with every 12 to 15 people that you hire that are six-point profilers, you're going to find three to four that will come out of that that will that'll, that'll want to be great. But out of those three to four, you've got to realize that you've got eight or so that they're not going to want to be great. They're going to be time wasters. And so what I want to get people to realize is it's time to run. It's time to go. It's time to get on fire for just a little while and be good at both. Be good at writing business. Be good at getting people on the sales training of 11 to 11. Get good at going out there and building your business, whether it's zip recruiter or whether it's at gas stations, it doesn't matter. We're looking for people that want more out of life. And how do you interview somebody? Interview somebody in such a way that you find out very quickly if they want more out of life. Mm -hmm. And if you don't detect they want more out of life, hang up the phone, yep. go, find somebody else, hurry. So there, there's a level of posture. There's a level of, 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 of time sensitivity to what we have, because I'm just going to tell you, six months from now, Equus is not going to be the same opportunity. Six years from now, Equus is not going to be, doesn't mean it's not as good an opportunity. It's just not going to be the same. Equus Financial is changing every day. And I will promise you, I'm not going to have anybody on my team, Carrie, come back to me five years from now and say, I wish I would have known. Mm. No, 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 no. You know. You know now. We're telling you now. And so I want you to have the guts to do what Brandon Clark did. If you're not a regional manager and you really like to be one real bad, I'm going to invite you to set your date. I don't care when you set it, but set a date so your brain can start working towards it. If you don't, if you don't understand how to get your brain working towards your goal, then let's, let's figure that out tonight because you can't live another day without getting your brain engaged in what you're trying to accomplish. And if you don't give yourself deadlines, your brain will never engage the genius that it actually is. Your brain is genius and it will figure out how to do certain things if you put it in a position to do certain things. So Carrie, you wanna close this out? I don't know. How, how do I close out after John Kite's talking? Well, I just think if you guys would um, engage as much as you can, reach out to whatever seems to fit right now, maybe some of the strategies and styles that, that John has works for you. Maybe some of what works with me resonates with you, but definitely take the bull by the horns. The number one regret all of us who have made it to district manager or regional manager is we didn't start sooner. And yeah. And I can't tell you how many people I was too shy or whatever my problem was to talk to them about this are coming to me now. So everyone should know what you're doing. Not only you can protect their family with the products that we have, but um, everyone's looking for this position. Why not have it be you that gets one of the next regional manager positions? And we're all here to help. I mean, just the fact that John and I are here at 10 o'clock at night, we probably want to go to sleep. <laughs> Come on, we're all here. Everyone's here to help you out. And just reach out. I don't know anybody that's ever said no to me yet. And I'm sure you guys are the same. So thank you for taking the time and sitting with us. I hope but you got one little nugget tonight that's worth it. Absolutely. And I want to say this, that um, guys, I'm, I'm excited about the time frame we're in right now. Um, and seriously, I mean, I, I, my passion is, is simply getting you to recognize that you're here for a reason and 
the, the decision that Barry Clarkson made on Friday or the decision actually Barry Clarkson made last week and what he announced on Friday, it is so life-changing if you'll embrace it. Um, I, I, I really, even if you feel silly for a little while, I would turn yourself loose. I, I told, I, I did Pete Beckman's call tonight. And so I actually did that right up until nine o'clock. And here, here's, here's what I told him. And I'll tell y'all the same thing. Would you go get 100 no's every seven days if I gave you at the end of every seven days, if I gave you a check for $10,000, would you go get 100 no's in seven days? And the answer to that is yes. There's not a single person on this Zoom tonight that would not go get 100 no's in amongst that they wouldn't shut down their sales business, but in amongst their lives, they'd go get a hundred no's. And here's the way it would look. Are you open to making money? I didn't think so. Thank you very much. Uh, you wouldn't be open to making any money on this. I didn't think so. Thank you very much. But you'd go out there and you'd get the answers as quick as possible because all you got to get is a hundred and it's $10,000. Well, if I can get you to realize this, you will make so much more than 10,000 a week if you would turn yourself loose like that and you would just go ask the question. Just go ask the question. It, it, it's, I don't, I don't know if there, if there'll ever be a, an opportunity that we collectively have, maybe some of us, but I don't know if anybody, if, if we collectively will ever have an opportunity to actually override a company like Equus Financial. I don't know if we will. And I don't know how long Equus Financial is going to last. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know how long Barry Clarkson, I, I hope he stays healthy for a 20-year run. I, I hope he does, but nobody knows. All I want us to realize is the opportunity that we have right in front of us right now, and I just think it's worth even going out there and looking silly to seize it. So, Carrie, thanks so much. Ollie Collins, Mike Hall, thanks so much for your questions tonight and your guidance. And um, I'll see you guys next week. All right, thank you.